hi, a wild sauce appeared, and that I probably just introduced this episode in mid cough. Um, I I love thinking about fictional universes, and it's like, how's your fucking hey, what is canon in your universe and what isn't? Why are there these nebulous fucking inconsistencies? Like, like. And I get it. I like, like, and I'm not talking about like real deep, like plot hole stories. I'm talking just the pure, um, just, just these pure random gags. Like, like, what house is in front of the Simpsons house? Some would debate that it's that that uh, blue, blue hair, like not blue haired, but um, uh, she's gray haired, like. Not crazy cat lady, but one who looks a lot like her, except more pale, if I rem if I remember exactly. Um, but others would say George W. Bush, you know, George H. W. Bush, excuse me. Um, and <laughs> and then there's like the the Simpsons hit and run, which apparently is semi canon. Like that's the that. They, at least the, the locations are supposed to be canon, because that's the only real physical map of Springfield that we have that isn't uh, in uh, Burns' uh, let, Let's look at- holy shit! That's just something that passed into my brain just now, was the fucking, um, was, was the fucking map that Mr. Burns had of Springfield. Uh, hold on, I'm typing it in now. Uh, uh, Springfield, I want to say landscape, because it wasn't quite a map, because, you know, it had, like, toys on it and stuff, like, miniatures. I mean, I guess it's kind of a map, but at the same time, I'm not really comfortable, like, calling it that. Not, it's not really a comfort thing, it's just a OCD thing. Um... Uh, man. Okay, here we go. There, there's a more specific map of Simpsons. Let's see how deep it goes. Okay, yeah. It has the list of locations. So where is, uh, where is their house? Where, let, let's decide this once and for all. Let me, let me cite the map that I'm looking at. It's the map of Springfield from Brilliant Maps. Okay. Um, from Brilliant Maps, the website. So I, I'm, I'm looking at it, okay. Oak Grove, where's Evergreen Terrace? Evergreen Terrace. Elm Street. Isn't Ev Evergreen Terrace somewhere around there? Wait, what's this say? What, what does this say? It just says Street. D Street. D Street, okay. Huh. Um, where's Fake Street? Is there a Fake Street? I hope. <laughs> um, oh fuck. Uh, okay, I'm guessing that the. Okay, there's the retirement castle. Gotcha. Uh, aren't they? On, aren't they on like the? Let's see, it's 742. But they don't say if it's east, west, north, or south. Springfield Hardware Video Matchmaking. Uh, let's see, Springfield Psychiatric Center. I'm I'm looking at the north. It looks like there's, because it says residential fields and it's mentioning uh, uh Springfield Residential, King Street, Capital City, Sixth Street. Okay, there's Bart's Loft. Oh, that must be the, uh, the old, uh, factory that he rented out. Uh, Florence of Arabia, Lapland Dancing, <laughs> um, come on, come on, come on, come on, you feel it, come on, come on, okay, uh, hmm. I found Mr. Burns' estate, but that shouldn't be hard, Old Simpsons Farm, Am I getting close? I, no, that's further away, because that was... That's out of the... Okay. Fat Tony's compound. Shouldn't it be over in this general area? Where's... 
Oh my god, it's highlighted. I'm a jackass. I'm a fucking jackass, okay? Um, there's Evergreen Terrace. And what's in front of their house? Yeah, it's it's not showing any distinction between the houses, so I'm assuming they're all the same size. Which, because, like, that house that, uh, that H.W. Bush lived was huge. At least the, uh, the building was... was was pretty huge. Uh, maybe, maybe it shows in like the. No, no, I can tell straight away. I'm, I'm looking at the compare. I'm looking at like the intros, and there are so many inconsistencies there. I can't. I. God damn. Like that's that's where I'm going with all this. Is that, yo, talking about like consistencies? So it so stupid, but it's something that needs to be discussed, because it lends credence to- cause, cause, because- because it can weigh into crucial factors in the- in the television show. Like, when- when Bart was trying to convince Homer that, uh, that Selma wasn't going to- uh, was going to explode, because of the gas in her fucking, uh, her fucking fireplace, right? Um, like, what would have happened had they lived, m like, much closer or further away? Because it's like, because Bart was literally second, was in, uh, Selma's room by second. Like, imagine if they lived slightly farther away, or if one of them, like, Tripped on a fucking rock. Like, that would have been it. Everything would. Selma would be dead. Selma would, would be out of the series forever. And that would cause all kinds of weird shit. So, when you think about things like that, because, like, that's the, that's the best part about being a writer is you don't have to. I, like, and, and that's, that's why, like, I don't feel like descriptive story writing will ever leave, will ever leave the consciousness of the people, because you can fill in those kinds of details. You can fill in whatever details you want, uh, and, and they can have drastic effects or minimal effects. Everything, everything has possibilities. The, the ability to write fiction is nebulous, and I feel like that's, I mean, may, maybe I'm just a hard-headed person who doesn't who, you know, writing comes off easily for me. It obviously doesn't come off as easy for a lot of fucking people. A lot of people barely get by on five-page uh, fucking reports. Because they feel like they can, you know, sort of just build a case on a minimal thing. But no, I like to dig. I like to see the skeletons of the thing. And that's why, to me, like... I can't, and, and that's why to me, like, writing is a sort of, it is an art form directly because you can sculpt it, you can, you can measure out the details, you don't need to go into exuberant detail in some areas, and that's the same, and that's the same case with a lot of, a, a lot of art is, you know, simplification, or, or whatever, it, um, not postmodernism. It's something close to that. Um, eracism? No, eracism. <laughs> er eracism isn't real. <laughs> um, take take that. Um, <laughs> um, I, I can, it, it's it's that thing where where it's called. Is it just modern? No, it can't be modernism. Um, where, where you sort of like take away detail and it's and it's considered a whole new beast Cause like like it, it's like with uh, David Bowie's hero album heroes album versus uh, versus what's the one before black star uh, the next day like and the next day and the next day and the next day. <laughs> 
I've been watching a lot of Spongebob lately. Spongebob and Trailer Park Boys. God, I love Trailer Park Boys so much. Now, now I've got a topic to uh, discuss. And so like with, uh, I'm not gonna spoil the ending or anything like that, but the series is going animated. They try to justify it, and I'm not going to dispute it. I think it works personally, but I'm not going to dispute it or discuss what it is. Uh, gonna take a drink here. Um, anyway, the, the problem that I, I, like, okay, so the reason why they're, they are going to, and this, the real life reason why they are going into animation is because they want to keep the spirit, uh, they want to keep the character of Jim Leahy alive, even though the real life actor passed away. And they feel like they can do a good job of that through, uh, through getting a voice actor that sounds a lot like him. And they, they said, like, it was either that or, <laughs> okay, no, they didn't say this, I made it up. But, like, imagine if they said, like, like, it's like, we didn't want to resort to doing a Bell Lugosi and Plan 9 from Outer Space. Like, could you imagine, like, putting somebody in a bald cap and aviator glasses and just, like, calling him Jim Leahy and he doesn't, like, he doesn't talk at all, he just sort of sneaks around. It, it, what if he just has, like, a bottle of liquor, like, it, facing the camera the whole time? Uh, on the other hand, though, like, they could easily just try to censor Jim Leahy's face. You know, they can get a decent body double, right? Hear me out now. And, and Jim is just like... And, and and Jim Leahy, the character, is just like... I, I, I've I decided I'm sick of seeing my fucking face on that goddamn camera. I decided it would be best for, uh, for me to, you know, start, you know, redeeming myself. Uh, uh, and... Uh, I, and looking through the episodes, I realized I was not such a nice guy, and you know, I, I gotta learn to be, to better myself, and to do that, I need to start anew, so from now on, you can't, you can't, you, you can't, just can't show my face on television anymore, sorry, no questions. <laughs> um, that being said, I don't know how well the show will translate into becoming, uh, animated because it seems to me like a lot of the uh, a lot of the humor came from it being set in real life um, it's very much a product of its environment that being said it could translate to to animated humor there wouldn't there would need to be a lot more like writing um, the uh, there, there'd need to be a lot more, um, verbal humor, spoken humor, rather than, uh, Pratt Falls. Or, maybe they can get even bigger with it, and maybe it'll work, you know, some series can go bigger and have it still work for them. Other ones tend to be, you know, just sort of fall on their asses and trip over their own balls. That's hard, Night Rises! <laughs> Excuse me, goodness. Um... Gosh, uh, what, I, what was I saying here? Uh, Return of the Kings! <laughs> um, excuse me, goodness, what? Oh, what's happening to me? <laughs> Return of the Jedi! <laughs> uh, <laughs> Honestly, folks, I can keep going on and on about that shit. <laughs> they're, 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 more often than not, things tend to go in the wrong direction. <laughs> Shock Infinite! <laughs> Though, once again, for all of the fucking shit I give Bioshock Infinite, that intro was the best fucking intro in a game I've ever, I've, I've ever witnessed, I've ever played, ever. Like, like, the only thing that I can think of that comes close is the beginning of the new God of War. That was great. It came close, but honestly, Bioshock Infinite takes takes the cake by far. As soon as chapter like chapter one is the best. In fact, it hypes you up for the rest of the game that just sort of 
just it hypes you up too much. It's so well done that you can see that. And, and you know what I blame a lot of? I blame uh, I blame the fact that they they seem to be like the lighting in that game was important. And night sessions aside, the lighting in that game beyond I'd say beyond the point of the play just starts going bright and with no real subtleties or ideal shadowing. Everything is just so it's almost cellul uh cell cellular cell it's that comic book style. <laughs> anyway, stay wild. I may be talking about this in the next episode. Maybe not. Find out, please. And don't go, because, you know, I don't want to have, have much, and I appreciate people listening. That number at the bottom of the screen that tells me how many views. It's... Nobody knows the trouble I've seen. Nobody knows my sorrow.